inhale, <laughs> no, this isn't a chainsaw shop. Although, my wife might beg to differ. <laughs> We're gonna settle this steel versus Husqvarna <clears throat> debate once and for all. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, I'll show you a few saws that I have in the shop right now. Um, actually, I own all these uh, saws and uh, got a few stories about them. Let's start with the oldest saw that I have. <clears throat> Um, this is a, uh, a 345. I bought this brand new, I think it was around 97 or something like that, 98. And, uh, I think this series had sort of just come out. Um, and I don't know if this saw has done, you know, it, I use it like heavy for like a while and then it'll sit in the shed and, uh, you know, and then I'll go ahead and it's been through a couple bars though. So, you know, it, it does have some use on it. Never had a lick of problem with this. So I know that this is uh this series is really not that popular with a lot of people. They call it homeowner saw, right? Um, but, uh, I mean, it's cut a lot of wood and it's been through quite a few chains. And like I said, I think this is the third bar. Um, and uh, never had a lick of problem with it. Changed fuel filters and air filters and uh, stuff like that. But uh, other than that, um, trouble-free operation for what, 25 years? Um, so pretty damn good. Um, this saw is actually, a, it, it cuts real nice. It's a 45 cc, so it's not a real small engine by any means, but it's not big either. Basically just a mid-size uh, chainsaw, but keep the, keep the chain sharp and keep the thing tuned up nice. And uh, it cuts very good for like a small saw. So, no, nothing bad to say about this saw. Um, we do have a, uh, one of these little ported mufflers on it nowadays. Um, I didn't really honestly notice any difference as far as like uh, cutting power after I put that on there. So, as far as I can tell, it's, really not any different than, uh, you know, than a stock OEM muffler. Um, it just got a real good cleaning, a thorough cleaning. I think I'm going to sell this uh, um, in the near future here. And the reason why is uh, a buddy of mine has one of these. This is a, uh, a 55. So this is like a 1993 saw. Um, basically it's sort of cut from the same cloth as the, uh, the old 200 series saws. So it has like a, a full magnesium crankcase that splits, uh, has the vertical split instead of the horizontal, like the newer saws. And uh, tough, rugged, powerful, uh, honestly, oh, this is the Rancher actually. Um, so I came across this saw, it was being sold just recently and it was, the piston was seized. Um, but other than that, the whole saw was pretty much, uh, you know, complete. Um, and uh, got a new aftermarket, um, a highway top end kit and uh, installed that. And uh, just recently, I, in fact, just this morning I was outside uh, cutting some wood and doing, giving it a little shakedown and uh, um, you put a new Oregon chain on it, 
uh, top end, completely clean the thing, completely disassembled. I mean, it, it's hard to uh, sort of explain what happens to these saws when they don't get clean for <laughs> the life of the saw, but basically they get all packed up in this side with like uh, sawdust. And one of the bad, bad things is, uh, you know, they're air cooled, fan cooled. So basically stuff gets sucked in through the, uh, the fan side, the ignition side and blown up into the, uh, well, all around in here. The crankcase gets all stuffed with like oil soaked, uh, oil and gas soaked sawdust and it ends up migrating into the uh you know the cylinder fins and uh, reduces the cooling and that can actually contribute to uh you know piston seizure and things like that so uh it's always a good thing to like clean your saw like maybe every year depending on the use you know maybe every uh certainly every year but if you're a heavy user maybe every six months even uh, that sawdust stuff that gets inside there just is not good for them anyway this saw is uh pretty much the same thing in fact i don't really notice any difference at all this is a regular 55 as you can see um, so actually this saw was made, I think in 93 and this saw was made in, uh, 2000, I believe. So what they, they came out with this fifth, this basically the 50 series where, uh, they came out with a 50, 51, uh, and then the 55, and then they called the 55 the 55 Rancher uh, after that. So this is the latest version of the 50 series, but uh, these are all 55 cc's, and uh, they all have that magnesium uh, crankcase and uh, Walbro carburetors. Um, and uh, capable of pulling a 20 inch bar, no problem. I think the max you, they recommend is the 22, but uh, these are, they're fairly lightweight saws, the 55 cc's, and, uh, and they cut really nice with, uh, with uh, you know, a good chain on them plenty of power to pull a good chain through. So, 55, <clears throat> nice saws. And then we also have a little saw that I bought for, uh, I think I bought this a few years ago for like, 80 bucks and the guy said it won't start I can't pull the cord <laughs> I'm like really and uh, I said actually I think it was 75 he wanted like 80 and I was like mm, no I don't think so it's not a non-running saw but uh, um, I ended up buying it and uh, brought it home took it apart and the main bearings were like rusted and frozen, you know? It was just the main bearings though. Took the entire saw apart and replaced the main bearings and put it all back together. I mean, it was it looked like a brand new saw, like it had hardly even been used when I bought it. And, uh, and it's been running fine ever since. I actually put a little 14 inch bar on this saw and I just use it for limbing and stuff like that. Um, 
so it's a nice little, it runs good. It's not particularly powerful, but you know, when you're cutting through winds, it's not like you're uh, trying to like burn your way through big timber or something like that. You don't really need to be. About the only drawback to a little bar like that is you have to, if you're, if you're trying to cut something on the ground, you you have to bend over a lot. So that's why I pretty much only use it for living. I have actually climbed trees with this before, but it's, I mean, it's, it's not a real light saw, even though it's called a 240. Um, so it's a fairly modern saw. I don't know if I've ever looked, I never bothered to look up the serial number, but it, uh, it was probably uh, built, manufactured in like maybe 2010 or something like that. That's about the the year of this uh, this series, this 240 series. Anyway, it's, it's not a bad little saw. I've never, other than the main bearing thing, which you know was already, I don't know how that would have happened, but. Uh, I've never had a problem with this saw either, you know. So, anyway, I wish I had some steel content to like show you, but um, uh, when I was younger, my brother was a logger, and uh, and he and his crew they pretty much used Husqvarna's exclusively. I can never remember seeing a steel saw on their, on their job sites. And, uh, and the first saw I ever bought was a Husqvarna, that, that 345 there. And uh, I don't know, I guess I just like the way they're sort of uh, designed and assembled. And they, they, they're easy to work on too. So that's what I've decided on and uh, that's what I use. And, and if I'm looking for something to like, uh, you know, buy and maybe rebuild and resell, that's usually what I pick because they're easy to work on. So anyway, hope you found this informative and uh, happy cutting while you're uh, out there in the woods. Okay, we'll see you.